Okay, guys, there is a lot going to go into this one. I have so much to share, but let's start off with some context. You've seen me wear these Nakona shirts. These are the coolest shirts ever. You see this guy here? He is literally beating Satan or Bezel Bomb or whatever you want to call it. Just don't say it three times. I don't need that kind of fiasco and that kind of hate in my shed. Now, before we get going here, just remember this guitar because I think I found this very guitar, but I want to tell you something. Sometimes the fangirls get out of control, and um, I got a post today, a comment that asked me, and it really made me think, you know, can you do the repairs that you do without talking because you talk too much? And, you know, that made me think. It, it really got me to thinking, you know. And, and it, just, it just made me feel the love that y'all give me. At least most y'all know I can't stop talking. I, I hurt my uh, vocal cords in a serious industrial accident uh, one time. And... Um, it kind of ended my ballet career too. Foupe, Chate, you should have saw that move, but it's below the camera and I'm not moving all that. Anyway, yeah, dude, you know what? I know people that can't talk. So, but again, I'm going to give it a little bit more thought. And uh, yeah, you're the winner, fangirl. Mommy raised a bully. <laughs> message there for you. Now, back to reality for the rest of you all. I have another guitar. You've seen the Galliano junk pile. You know the Harmony junk pile, the basket case. The few more seconds, it gets another playlist up there. Well, guess what, people? There's another one that this pathway has no end, no exit. Once you get down going, once you buy it, it's it's Def Leppard for you, baby, and your bank account. It's too late. Anyway, we're going to do something together here. Isn't that touching? I want to tell you a story. That involves me talking. Imagine that. So, eBay, let's talk about the economics of this. I'm going to give you some more cards. Remember, Beginner's Guide to Econo Arch Tops, where it kind of said, hey, you want to look for this and this and this and this, and if you see that and the price is 300 yeah, no. You don't want that one. And then there was a guide to buying Econo Arch Tops. Um, that's up there, too. So we've gotten rid of four of our five play cards right away but I've talked to you about eBay maybe I haven't maybe I will right now but again that involves me talking um, when you go to eBay um, number one you don't know what you're gonna get and you really have to understand the economics of arch top guitars because Here's the problem. Let's say that there's a guitar there. Let's say it has some body cracks. Let's say the neck isn't right. Let's say, you know, tuners are, are, are crumbling. Um, can be any number of things. Uh, top sunk in to the point where we're building overpasses and stuff. You'll know that the structural stuff doesn't scare me. But in terms of what you guys are doing, you have to ask yourself, if I'm watching... Ken, I'm not going crazy. I'm already there, third, um, uh, third person talking about myself. But in reality, guys, what are you buying these things for? Do you want to fix them up and give them away? Do you want to get better at your luthier skills? I'll tell you what, that's not a bad idea because when you start getting into 
um, fixing things. Something in my brain, it, I, some people would think it's their conscience. I don't have one, so that's not the problem. But some is telling me, okay, move this along because you're going way down the path. And yeah, dude, you never got in my head, so don't try. Anyway, if you want to figure out how to fix guitars, the best way to do that is to, number one, own the guitars you're going to make the mistakes on and pay little to nothing. You can go on uh, app, apps. Yeah, that's what they call them. Uh, free stuff. There's one called pay nothing. You can just put in there, I want guitars for free. And you'll find people giving you guitars that are beat up, some of them not. Whatever, but anyway, the economics of this is, is this. When you start shipping an arch top, uh, number one, if it's in any kind of shape, if it's any kind of brand name, you got to pack it and you got to have insurance. The box is going to cost you at least 20 bucks. Um, I like to ship in those, um, those telescoping television, flat screen television boxes. Um, you got to know what the measurements are, the maximum measurements for the postal service, all that kind of thing. So understand the economics of all that. But if you are buying something on the internet, number one, remember, you don't know what you're getting. Assume that the videos that I'm telling you about that are up there, know what the issues are. You see cracks uh, adjacent to... Uh, where the neck attaches the body, you see splits there, you see the neck splitting, you see the back coming off, you see the angle of the neck. You can't see all that when you buy the stuff over the internet. So assume the worst and ask questions. Now, let's say you can get a guitar for a hundred bucks and you know it's messed up. Well, guess what? You're gonna have to pay another 80 bucks to get it to you. So now, you are 160 bucks into an $80 guitar that you're going to have to do a bunch of stuff to. And yeah, we're going to, we're going to do this one because it's worth it. So here's the story. I've got a search going on and um, it turned up a guitar called a Rex, R-E-X. Of course, it's made by the usual uh, suppliers who, who would put a name on it uh, if you ordered it and um, let's call this one Redondo Redondo R-O-N-D-O Rex R-E-X Redondo Rex so when you see the hashtag Redondo Rex I'll build it out so you can see where this started what we do with it and again this is another major structural repair but I found this one listed on eBay at a price that I didn't want to pay. And that's okay. Maybe someone will pay it. There are interior designers or different collectible people. That's all great. But when it comes time for me to do something and put something into this and get it out the door to somebody, um, I got to put a lot of hours in it to make them dependable. So I waited a couple of cycles and nobody bid on this thing. And it got down to the third cycle and um, they kept reducing the price. So I looked at the other items the seller had, and there was a lot of different things. There was electronics, there were collectibles, there were some real practical things, there were some tools that ranged anywhere from uh, audio equipment for a car to actual tools and stuff. And it became apparent to me that I had somebody that was a reseller of all kinds of different things, and... Um, so I asked a couple questions along the way, um, asked the buyer or the seller, have you considered maybe doing um, a best offer? And they were great. They responded back to me saying, no, we don't do that. We use a formula to kind of adjust the price and, and, and there will be price adjustments. So I just waited. Well, it got to the point where we were within about 15% of what I really wanted to pay. And... You know, when a seller is good to you and responsible, you, sometimes you have to realize this is a two-way street. I'm going to have some material to cover on my channel with this guitar. Don't worry, we're going to open it up here. 
I have, by the way, outside of pictures, I have not seen this guitar. We're going to see it together. But I thought, you know what? We're within 15%. It's getting down to the last couple hours. So I threw the bid out there. Nobody else bid. I got it for the minimum. I didn't get hurt on, you know, the few extra dollars that I would have saved and had to wait. And guess what? The guitar offered the option to pick up. So remember, everybody that's out there bidding on the stuff out there was going to have to pay another 80 bucks just to get it to them in addition to whatever they paid for the guitar. Now, I can't say that I have been real good for the market of hiding things about cheap arch tops where people haven't figured out, you know what, I watched Ken. I listen to him drone on incessantly, but the one thing I took away is getting into these guitars and thinking you're going to flip them for a profit is a very sketchy proposition. So I knew it was local. One of the first things I asked the person, do you provide for local pickup? It even said that in the ad. I wanted to confirm that. So at the end of the day, I bid, I won. I promptly got a message. Uh, the seller was uh, ready to help me in every way. And um, there was a bonus that came with this that I want to talk to you about. Have you ever bought a box to ship a guitar in? Well, we talked about uh, uh, telescoping big screen TV boxes or you're moving stuff. Those boxes can be $30 and $40. So, before you even go to the post office, if you're shipping something like that and you tilt the guitar a little bit to meet the size requirements so you don't exceed the height requirement for the post office, you're going to still spend, out of the United States post office, I've spent as little as $140 to ship something to Ireland. I think I'll burn up the last card on... A kit arch top that I sent to the Bonnevilles over there. Now all the cards are going. I don't have to worry about it. But when I went to pick up this guitar today, guess what? It was all packaged up. It was a number. It was an item. It was labeled. It has writing from other countries and stuff on it. But it was packaged up professionally. So whoever bought it, it was ready to go. And so this is somebody that was turning a lot of product through eBay in a big warehouse, but the people that dealt with me and come out to see me, they were great. But this box right here, the guitar was in it. I have a packing box here with everything I need. I need to ship a guitar to someone else. I think we're talking a minimum of $20. Guess what? came to me for free. So, in addition to what I wanted to pay for the guitar, paid a little bit more, I still come out ahead. So, without further ado, let's open this up. Maybe I'll turn this around. And I think I'll show you. How it comes out of the box. And then we'll get it over on the bench. Like I said, I had, outside of the pictures, I had no idea what I was getting other than I like that paint job. Kind of looks like a cool sunset. Rex painted on. String action is ungodly high. Look at that. But, oddly enough, the neck is not broke loose, but the body is. The back of the body is all over the place, and we have a gap here. Now, there is 
it's not a pronounced V neck here. It kind of gets that way here. But that bridge right there tells me that this guitar is from the 40s, late 40s. It has a pit guard. It has the pit guard bracket. But back to what we see here. I want you to look real close right here. The top of the body is sticking out over the sides. And I've talked to you guys about necks and bodies flexing when this all comes loose. That's what's going on here. This neck is not, it has the original nut, it has the original tuners, everything's in pretty good shape. But this body is coming apart. And when the bodies come apart, things start flexing here and back here. And what do you know? You've got an extremely high action. So we're going to spend the rest of this episode kind of taking a look at what do you know? It's got tone bars. What do you know? Everything is shrinking right here. Now, if I were to push that up as high as the action is now, it would push it up even higher. But, again, it's a tone bar guitar. Top is warped. Back has a lot of splits. Is loose. So, let's take this over to the bench now and run through it and look at some of the, the problems close up and see what we're going to have to put into it. And then we'll kick off um, a playlist on this guitar by loading it up with this first after we have a closer look. Okay, guys, let's start at the back. Um, this guitar was made by Harmony. Um, Rex was a name that was put on the guitar for sale. Um, Rex is just one of a number. Harmony... Uh, labeled these on the headstocks as a Baccarua Sonata and a Concerto, amongst other things. But we'll get to that when we get around to the front. So you got the original tuners. They seem to work okay. Um, the headstock is in good shape. There's no cracks. There's a couple dings and stuff. You can tell somebody has used a capo here and there. Um, the neck is like a baseball bat. It's very rounded. Uh, but when we get to this area here, there's kind of a pronounced V. Um, this guitar, by, by virtue of the inside marks, was made in the second half of 1942. That's what the marks tell us. Um, once we get in there, we'll have a closer look at everything, and including the model number. But you can tell that there are some cracks here just about everywhere. And one of the most telltale ones here is this part of the body sticks out past the side, both here, not here, but here, and all the way here, which tells you not only are things pivoting at the neck joint here, but they're twisting as well. Um, so very interesting paint job. There's a... Uh, one of these guitars on the internet right now that's exactly like this. Um, but fake binding, paint binding, and um, tore up from the floor. But that is a very interesting design for me. There's a lot of reflection here. Now, coming to the front, again, that's just painted on there. Rex, if you do Google searches, they would tell you that they were... Uh, instruments for students there's no escutcheons on the tuners the original bridge is here this guitar has been played some by you can tell the fingernail marks the fret markers are painted on it's got those thin brassy almost nothing frets that that we know about and again you can see here that this is pronounced but Everything is starting to pitch and get out of whack. Um, the guitar that I referenced that's on the internet has the same pit guard. So this is the pit guard with the design that came with it. It's got the bracket and the original screws. They're flathead screws. 
that bridge is incredible. Um, the tail piece uh, is not a trapeze. It's just a, a one-piece metal. It's got the strap uh, button there. Um, but this guitar was a student instrument. Um, they put the paint on it, some pinstriping and stuff to make it um, enjoyable to look at. Now, as I've told you guys before, let's see if we shouldn't move in a little bit here and see how that looks. Adjust the camera down where we want to get to the body. How's that? Tell me it's good two months from now after we film this, but if I stick my finger in here, my little finger, the tone bar is there and there's another one there so they tend to run from up here down to the bottom so on the inside the kerfing is here uh, that lets you glue the top to the sides so those tone bars are tapered kind of like um, an airfoil on an old biplane wing but they come down in here now inevitably what happens is after a while those start to settle and shrink and um, so the top is caved in right here. Let's make sure that we can pull this down a little bit more and see what I'm looking at here. I can see the top is up here, but caved in here and here. So there's been a lot of weight sitting on this. Um, this is all rusty. There's not much of a break over left here. But once we take this apart on the inside, we're going to see that there's some steam and work to do here. Um, what attracted me um, uh, to this guitar was, first off, I think this paint job is incredible. And next, it's got, for the right price point, um, we can work on this and get things leveled out and um, do some of the structural magic I like to do. So... That's pretty much it. A Harmony made guitar with tone bars, a cheap paint job, and oh, incidentally, it's got the fabric um, structural stuff going across the back. So we're going to be able to use some chick flick teal begging strips on this one, but they're all loose in there and they've come apart. And they're just kind of hanging there. So, again, not a lot of money into this guitar when it was built. And um, we'll be seeing a lot of this in the next few episodes. All right. If you've watched any of my start to finish on some of these um, arch tops, the ones especially that have the tone bars, you know that there's nothing in here that we haven't done. Uh, before and you know that I have built some templates and things through my experience doing this it's going to make this a fairly quick job I really like um, the, the paint job on this and I would tell you that if you are wasting your life and your time progressing some of the talents you have to do the kind of stuff I do with these things this is not a big deal um, but again, a lot of time, a lot of time. So next time you see me, we'll just do all the structural work in one video. We'll take the back off. Uh, we'll fold the guitar into thinking it's still back on. We'll take a look at the inside. We'll get things straightened out. We'll steam some things and we'll do some oddball structure stuff that you'll probably only see here. Remember, if you get a guitar like this and you go through some of the stuff and get some of the practical stuff worked out, the day may come when you can work on more expensive guitars where the stakes are a lot higher. And I think when you're able to do that, you can get things for a fair price. You can have an intelligent discussion with somebody that's selling and say, hey, look, here's what I do. Here's where I need to be on my price. Here's what I think I can do. But always remember, you will not know what is in that box until you open it. Um, the seller, I would say that they were honest with me. Um, 
when I went to pick it up, everything was right. You can't beat it being in the box, ready to go. Nobody was nickel and diming me, giving me attitude. But um, again, think about using guitars like this to advance your skill set. Then after a while, you can get where you're making repairs and making money doing it. There's a lot of people out there doing luthier work and they're good at it. And um, yeah, they're not working yard sale guitars. So keep that in the back of your mind. Stay out of trouble. Build up an old guitar. And I'll close this one out. Next time, again, we'll be doing the structural work on this one. See you then.